Oh, well, here goes nothing, yeah? We're going to take the tiny little screwdriver and start taking the pick guards off. And I got the ubiquitous cat biscuit box. We have these stray cats that my wife got about a year or so ago before all this lockdown malarkey. They're not, they were feral actually, they're not too bad now, but they eat these things like they're going out of fashion, dreamies. And I said, well, can I keep the boxes? Because I have different colours to store different things in. Um, which just makes life easy, but anyway, I'll just pause this and take it off and we'll see what's going on. Okay, that's all the screws off. Let's see if I can tease this out. Ooh, makes a bit of a noise, it's quite close. So it slides under there, I've got to lift it up a little bit. Now it's going to be quite difficult to get off without the strings coming off. So I think that's what I'm going to do, take the strings off. I didn't, or maybe pop the neck, although... Take the strings off, I think is the easiest way, or yeah, because I'll probably use these on the fretless guitar I've got, and I'll put some Dave Gilmore uh, boomers on the other ones. So, okay, uh, strings coming off. Okay, they come off easier than I thought. Um, I just used the string winder. Uh, I have to say though, I really do prefer the vintage tuners. I didn't like them until I got them on a bass and so much easier to pop strings in and out. So just lift the pick guard off. Yeah, off it comes. Ooh. How can we move? Oh, okay, so we flip it like that. So actually, Take my glasses off. Ceramic pickup, yeah, okay. Fairly clean soldering job, actually. Really quite clean in there. Um, actually, I would say the soldering is better than the SX, actually. Bit of crap in there, so my wife wouldn't like this because it's got like. Uh, I, clean, I, I put a bath in for her once, or two baths, actually, um, and there was all filth around the back of it you know, where the builders have put it in, and she projected the hate of 10 years of all that filth being there, so I, I can't deal with that, yeah. Um, so we've got a couple of wires coming out, and they're going, so there's no um, no shielding inside, what do you expect? No twisting wires, which is a really good idea, um, and that's something I would certainly do, although, as I said, it's pretty quiet. Um, quite a lot of crap in there, but, you know, wow. Uh a little bit of blemish in there, but that doesn't matter, it's hidden by the pit guard. Okay, I'll pause it and I get uh, get the other one out, the, the DG20. Oh, let's do it now, screw it. Here's the DG20, so I like a bit of unboxing. I was really impressed with the EMG J pickups for the bass. That, I used to think EMGs were expensive, and then I realised that my time is worth quite a bit to me, particularly as I get older. Everybody's time is precious at the minute with this pandemic thing. Um, no one wants to be the person as it ended shortly because of some virus or whatever. But the thing I would say about it is that um, when you look at the, the quality of the product, at least the ones I've had so far, sample of one isn't very really good, but the quality of everything about it is just really good, yeah? Let's try and get that out of there. I don't expect the holes to line up. Uh, piece of paper. Read this first. I've seen this online, so it talks about the frequency response and the different presence control. So you've got a volume control, you've got, what does that say? EXG, which seems to be lowering the frequency put it that way around seems to lower the frequency at one point and go up this is a sort of log scale and then you've got this one here spc which seems to increase the mid ranges yeah um this is pre-wired used by pink floyd david gilmore since 1985 three emg essays five position selector SPC, blah, blah, blah. Controls are effective when turned clockwise and fully bypassed when turned counterclockwise. It's too early in the morning to do that. Alnicos, apparently, which is quite nice. I mean, normally EMGs are not Alnicos, but these ones are. Output noise minus 91 at 60 hertz. Well, I'm at 50 hertz, guys. Maybe it doesn't work for British people. You need a battery. 
Installation. The only tools you need are a Phillips screwdriver, check, half inch hex nut driver, okay. Pickups control are pre-installed on the 11 screw pick guard and should fit into any strap style guitar. Well, okay. With screws, remove the strings, check. Unscrew the existing output jack and either unsolder or cut two wires. Remove the existing output jack and install 128 stereo jack. Or is that 12B? Hang on. 12B stereo jack included in the system uh, with the spring <laughs> terminals pointing downwards as shown in diagram number one okay route the output cable insert that do that okay that's too much reading i'll put that there for the minute uh let's have a look at this bad boy oops okay oh it smells lovely I have a thing about plastic going back to childhood. Those of you in Britain that are old enough remember these little things you put on the end of your pencils um, that would act like little banana characters or whatever, and I'd end up eating them. And I got quite into this. So they've got a whole load of screws. That's very nice. I'll stick those in the dreamy box. They've got the power and the output jack. And then they've got the pick guard itself. So some people take this off. Oh, it's very thick. Uh, indulge me a second whilst I find my... Here it is. With my chromatra. See how thick this thing is. They talk about the ply. I don't know. Let's have a look. Switch that on. Uh... Let's put it into millimeters, I guess. Zero it out. Okay. So the Harley Benton is 3.34. That keeps making change. 3.4. Let's call it three and a half millimeters thick. This thing is 3.3. It's exactly the same. Uh, Oh, no, wait a minute, that one says it's 2.3, 2.4 if I squeeze it. Okay. Two point seven. This is slightly thicker. Feels more quality, there's no doubt about that. Um it certainly feels better quality. I don't know if that makes any difference. Tone plastic, who knows? Turn this thing off, put it away. So that's pretty neat. Put that away. Okay. And then let's see how it fits in comparison. I mean, I think Kenneth Russell was saying that there's some sort of knockoff EMG brand he was going on about. I, I didn't think it sounded that brilliant, but at the same time, it's always a personal choice, isn't it? Doesn't matter what I think, it's what you want that counts. So let's have a quick look. Oh, that, that is a thing of beauty. A close up on that. I'll take my glasses off for that. I, I do appreciate good engineering. And. Oh, yeah, that switch feels. Oh, man. That is so much better quality than the other one. Only a little bit of shielding there, but one of the things I'm rather hoping I don't need to shield this thing because I didn't need to shield. I think it said you don't shield them. I didn't need to shield the J-Base. Um, that's going to be in the way, isn't it? Let's see if it fits. Bummer. So what's that in the way there? I'm going to have to sit down and look at this, guys. We're doing this real time. So. For a start... I think that the the neck is bigger. Let's have a look at the routing. This is a swimming pool route. So I think I've got two problems here. Both solvable. Yeah. 
So that won't go anywhere near as close to the body as the other one did, but I don't know if that's just, um, I don't know if that's okay, if you see what I mean. Just because the screw's not there, it does hide the screw, and it might be it's meant to be there, but what it seems is that the back here is just resting, and then I think, I think the problem is that this, um, selector or pickup selector is not going to fit into this gap here okay so let's turn it round a second let's look at this one put the pickups in the same relative position yeah i think this is that little bit more forwards um maybe i can find something straight like a straight edge perhaps one of those yet. Yeah. So, if we line this up here, like so. No, I don't know. I don't know. What I'll do is I'll pause it and I will see if I can work it out, or I might have to route it a bit if I want to put it in. At this stage, I'm hesitating because what I might do is to get the SX out and try the SX for size. Um, and put put this DG in the SX, yeah. Right, let's let's pause it and have a look. Hang on. Okay, I a bit more persistent. So if I drop it in the back end first, now let's use this screwdriver to show you what I mean. Yeah, that hole lines up there, sort of. And I think there's one that lines up there. This one's going to line up there just about. That one's going to line up there just about. The problem seems to be the the clearance under the neck here. Um, so I got two choices, I guess. I transfer it onto this pick guard, which is what um, my friend Snifter said I might have to do, and that's not necessarily a big deal. Let's turn it over. So you won't get this peel stuff there, but I've got plenty of copper tape. So what else needs to come off? Yeah, that's it, I think. I think it probably would just transfer directly into, you know, one-to-one -one transfer. That might be the better way to try it in the first instance. Um, that's what I'm going to do. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Okay, so we've been just taking stuff out, just the last nut to come off here. 10 mil on the Benton and I just tend to put the the washer back on top of the pot let's have a look at the pot values um, I don't always believe what's written on them there's a nice green capacitor on that let's just get that like that cut it to one side so it says that we've got audio 250 linear 250 audio 250 so the volume was linear and the two tones were audio apparently um let me pause that see if i can find my meter to check the value because on the lava guitars they were just badly out let's see okay i'm getting 225 off the back 225 230 off that and a really crazy reading off this front volume so i don't know maybe you can't measure them in situ on I'm not certain, but it seems a bit odd, right? So, I guess the important thing to remember here is white, yellow, red, and I think that's fairly sound. On a jazz bass, the white is the neck pickup, and the blue is the uh, sorry, I'm kind of blind. The the yellow is the back pickup or the bridge. So here it looks like the red is the last one. So it just reminds me on the video when I look back later when I come to put it back. So now let's take these pass it off here examine the pick guard if there's any more plastic on here or not sometimes there's two or three plies of plastic on let's have a look yeah i think there might be it's a good idea to get it off in this position yeah here's another one coming off on the sx i thought it was all crap and there were two yeah 
see it's coming off. Terrible, my son. You can't do it. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, there's a little bit of um, is it crap in the back here. Let's just put the craft knife in there. Oh, it's just a metal. Look, you can see that side. Oh, I think that'll do. All right, let's put that back on. I don't want to kill myself. So what I'll do... Um, let's offer that back up. It should fit because I took it out of there. Yep. What I'll do is I'll start to disassemble the uh, EMG guard now. And see if the thing's put in. What I'll do is I'll just take one of these... The front pick off pick up off first and see if it goes in because if it doesn't fit there's no point carrying on so back in a minute and here we see it fits in quite nicely yeah nice emg on there um let's try the others yeah okay i think that's going to work let me carry on with the next bit back in a moment so the first thing to notice although the emg fits in the screws are actually much thicker than the, than the uh, standard ones, and the holes aren't quite aligned up, so it's gonna take quite a bit of effort to get those springs in. Um, nice tight fit, but it's quite a lot of effort, more than I thought. Anyway, back on pause and I'll do the others. Okay, so we've put this in. The screw here is just a little bit wider, so you have to uh, put one screw in a little bit and leave it loose, put the next one in, then you can get it in, yeah? These are quite tight. Getting these screws in here is really difficult. The ply itself, uh, or this pick guard isn't big enough. What I'm gonna have to do here, you see, hopefully you see, um, these pots are bigger. I have a reamer bit, which I use for making guitar pedals. So I'm gonna get on with that in a minute and drill this out a little bit more. Okay, back in a minute. Oh, oh yeah. And uh, of course, because it's American, it's not 10 mil, it's it's more like 7 64ths, but 11 mil fits it to undo the the, the nuts so yeah okay okay so this is the special bit that I have uh, if you watch my video on fixing a garden gate I had to use it to drill something out but I normally use it for drilling into like electrical patches if I'm making some sort of basic guitar um, type uh, hole uh, for putting pegs through or whatever or putting an audio leads through I'm just trying to check roughly how wide this thing is in a second so it's got to fit to there it's probably more like this 10 mil, but it can't be 10 mil, it's probably about eight. Yeah, it looks like eight. So I think what I'll do is I'll just, it should just be a case of putting this through like this, letting it carve by hand. No sense in using the drill for this. And I'll probably try it on the other side as well. They're surprisingly sharp, these drills. I think they cost me about £10 or something in screw fix in Britain. <laughs> Just get that through a bit more. Let's see if that's starting to go through. Yeah, it's just opening up a little bit. So I think a little bit more either side like this. Yeah, so I, well, I'm going to carry that on and hopefully that will fit. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, that seems to be it. Just reamed it out a little bit. It's fairly neat. Not as good as Snifter, but not bad for me at least. So I'll just um, bolt that up and then I'll look at it, put a battery and I'll just dangle it over the side for the minute. So let's just get on with that. Okay, so it says down here in fairly decently large, although glass is black red. So there's the red, black. Uh, sorry, red is on the right, black, so that's the battery lead, green, white, black, I don't know about green, oh I see the green's there, white, black, so black's on the left, like so, white, that's it, slide it in, you can do it, that just leaves the green, yeah, I think that's green. Yeah. 
and I want the dew point at the top if I can do it. Hang on a second, I need closer inspection here. Uh, there, at the top like that, and there's a little arrow. Okay, I think that's it. So let's see. At this stage, I'm not going to undo the other pit guard because I already said it sounds pretty good, although I made a fundamental flaw here because, of course, the way I've done it... Oh, that's right. The way I've done it, I would have to uh, put the pit guard back if I wanted to put the originals on. Um, let's leave it like that for a minute. And then that will fit in there. Actually, I didn't check if the... Yeah, that will fit in. Look, that's going in. So... Uh, I think what I need to do is to undo this jack and put that in so it's got an output and then plug a battery in. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. I, I mean, it's not finished like this. This is more just an idea to get, does it make a sound? Yeah, what kind of sound? So, you know, it's it's about hedging my bets. But the cream doesn't look so good with the white, but I don't really care, to be honest. I mean, maybe I'll get a cream guard... For this i don't know we'll see anyway okay back in a minute okay so we got to the stage where we sort of put it together i did a brief test it was good uh i broke a string so what i'll do is i'll i'll make a sound test in another video um but at this stage it's all working so what i'm going to do is to take this out here oh that's done up well at the factory in harley benton i think i might need a better screwdriver for that there you go so we're going to take out the jack and replace with the you know, feed through the jack inside the body. That's one way around. Cut the wire because I can solder it back on. And I'm going to work out how to route to the chamber. See if I can use some of my other electronics kit to wire the battery straight into the claw, or the, the tremolo block at the back. I mean, I'm sure the battery will fit under here and what they suggest is that you stick it and lift these four screws up here and put the battery in there. But at this stage, I think I'd rather get it in the back. So, yeah, that wasn't grounded at all in any way. Um, but what did I get with it? What did they give me? I've lost a piece now. That's a bit bad, isn't it? Uh, screws are, oh it's there idiot it's there I couldn't find the end piece and it's because it's there uh, so let's take that out so what size is that jack it's probably going to be American what's that one 13 mil well, 13 mil seems to fit it which is almost half an inch so don't drill it too hard otherwise you round the, the nut edge off and 13 mil ugh, seems to fit that so let's just take this one off here off the original that's it. Stick that back like so. Hello? How did that happen? Now I'm a bit confused because there was a nut. Oh, it's come out there. That's why. <laughs> That's quite nice. So they had a nut either side. You don't see that often on, on guitars, even expensive ones. So that's quite neat. There was a nut either side. Uh, I've got my cutters somewhere. I can use these actually. These are just the string cutters. So I'll just cut that there and there. Uh, actually, I'll cut it with a little bit of... um. I've cut it like that so I can see a little bit of the red and black. So if I ever come to put it back, I know which one's red and black and saves me dicking around. So now I can drop that in there. I'll take this off camera and I'll root it through and show you how I did it. Okay, I'm just taking the strings out and... um. Most time they come out, but one of them got a bit stuck inside here, inside the claw. It is a very thin block. Oops. If you look inside, and I mean Dave doesn't like Harley. Well, he doesn't like. It's not he doesn't like Dave. Dave doesn't like Harley Benton's. I'm not going to say that. I can't say that. What I mean is that he doesn't like the cheaper guitars. He would go nuts about this, and I agree. Normally you put these straight in line, so that's going to change, and I'm going to change. You see, it's been. It's been the the claw has been put straight into the block, so there's no chance for floating. Um, oh, there's the E string coming out there. Look, that's the one I want. 
so I'll be getting on with that in a minute as well okay so I cut some of the strings off because I don't need these old strings they're going to put new ones on um, one thing that Del Bron says and it really depends on the gauge of the string so don't do this if the gauge of the strings is wrong sometimes you get problems with the nut and what he does he takes one of the off cut strings so in this case the fat one is there so that's the E string and he takes it off and then he sort of puts it in there and just goes back and forth a bit you hear that and it's like a little file so you can buy very expensive nut files or you can get this now don't forget you want a point at this end and it wants to to drop away like that because the string needs to be at a point that's where the start of the 648 mil length to the end is yeah so don't make it flat it needs to go downhill a little bit and that's if you need to so on these cheap nuts this is a plastic nut and it needs to be replaced really the strings get sort of bound in there as you bend and, and it affects the tuning so it's not always the tuning peg that go wrong sometimes it's just that they need graphite there um so this is a cheap mod if you don't want to buy a new nut other than that you knock the nut out and put a new one in it's always a bit difficult getting the first fret action but watch dave for that now i'm going to drop those in a little box because that's what i use them for okay so just a little tip when it comes to getting these emg things through the hole i just put a piece of sacrificial wire through and then i just try and put it through like that and i've bent the other one back so that it should come through and then you tease it through and hopefully if i get it right and give it a little pull okay i might need to push that through a little bit down here to get older my friends it's difficult to see stuff let's try and get that through uh, i'll be back it's it's hard work okay so what i had to do was to tighten this and squeeze it a little bit with the pliers careful not to nip it and then i give it a gentle uh, a firm tug and then it's through yeah so that got that through so that's how i did that bit next what i'm going to do is to try and see if i can get the battery cable through the claw Let's see if it will fit through there whilst i'm here oh that's the hole there is it that might be tight but i could make that slightly bigger maybe yeah i think i think that's what i'll do i'll go off camera i'll just make that slightly bigger with a drill okay i don't know if we can see in here let me see where i'm looking there uh there but actually there's real wood underneath there this isn't plywood it's quite thin there actually on that bit um quite well machined but there's real wood there who knew is it tone wood we'll find out okay so what i've done i've put them in line although it's a bit wonky this isn't set up yet it's going to go tighter and that leaves enough space for the battery to go in quite happily uh, underneath the uh, cover so that's how i would do it to make battery in and out easy oh you've only got two strings going to affect it i mean maybe the battery will rub against the springs and cause problems i put a bit of foam in if that's the case it's got plenty of foam but i'm now working with daryl bronze technique on floating the trim and dave does the same he puts a block of wood in there you tighten it up it's something to do with putting a penny under here and then you get that half a um what's it called half a tone bend uh up as well as down yeah so that's what i'll be doing next uh okay so the next thing is that this hole wasn't quite big enough to fit the bigger jack a thicker jack screw so i just used again this opening tool by hand just very gently so i haven't even gone through much just enough to open it up and then it seems to fit through yeah so just little tools if you want to do this okay okay so we put the the thing in we've got the the volume up or whatever and we should get the front pickup if i tap it with something there we are the rear pickup middle the two oh well, that one should be the two so that's done i've tried to make it so it's 10 at the top and one when i look down at the screw so then this should be one to ten i don't know it's just an autist thing uh, i had to widen that like i said now what i've got to do is to set the thing up because i'm going to put some new strings on it i'm going to use the string claw a bit like this there will be some that will say oh my god these tone springs won't work 
Once it's under tension, it's under tension. Yeah, the physics is the same. Uh, this allows me to put the battery there. So now I've got to set it up um, so I can float the tram a little bit. Um, that's going to take a lot of effort. It's a trial and all error. Um, and I'll probably put a little bit of PTFE tape around here, uh, plumber's tape, just to make it not sag so much. And maybe a little spring from the spring set. Choose a spring. It really depends because sometimes what happens when you put it into the spring hole here, it goes straight through. But that looks like it doesn't go straight through. So I'll probably put maybe a little spring like this one in here. Oh, man, I can never get the things out. That looks like it's going to be too fat. Oh, that's going to fit. All right, so then that little spring can go in like that so that when I screw this in, if I can screw it in, it's got something to... No, that's not going to fit. That's too big. I need a smaller spring. Okay, you get the idea. That's what I'll be doing. Okay. So I can't quite find a spring small enough yet. There's the PTFE tape on the end as such, and then it just screws in here and just gives it a little bit more... Right, just let it let it thread itself well it should take the follow the thread yeah these things are normally notoriously bad they are just going in like so and it just holds it a little bit more because ideally I want it to hang like that but I'm not sure it's gonna so what I think I want is a spring and the spring will push it up I got one on the SX and it's like a holy one it's just a push in that works better so I think I'll be ordering a tiny spring. I don't have any small enough to fit it. But now I've got to set the, the floating bridge up. And to do that, I've got to undo these screws about a millimeter. Um, so I've got to make them about oops, a millimeter deep here. Let's see if I can see this. Uh, so let's put it on unscrew. Because you want the bridge to float and you've got to spend trial and error getting the thing that's about a millimeter that's about a millimeter about an eighth of a turn backwards so they already left the other ones up in the air but the two point bridge that one's too high so it goes down a bit this one needs to come up and that should allow one of the strings run for the strings to pull out of the way pull the bridge forwards and then they'll pull it you see now you see it's going up in the air like that so that's where it normally whams down yeah so normally you whammy down but when the string tension is on it should pull it up in the air and it's about balancing the claw so you've got that little it's about the size of a american penny i think or a nickel or a dime rather to go backwards so the string tension should pull it now the only thing about the string tension being on it is it's going to move this intonation point for a teeny bit so probably all your intonation is gonna to have to come back here as well because you've just moved that that little bit closer to the bridge uh, sorry to to the neck to the nut rather which will change the length and that will change the intonation slightly anyway I'm gonna go on with that this is kind of boring trial and error work but it's kind of worth if you want a floating bar don't know if it will work with these tuners they are very loose in the actual body itself so undoubtedly I'll get some locking tuners for that and a new nut as well at one point. But let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. You're nothing ventured, nothing gained. It's it's worth a go, I think. One thing I want to say about the original Harley Benton setup, you notice they got two capacitors on the tones. That's really neat, because normally you get it on just one uh, in a sort of install. That might be why they sound pretty good. I think the stock pickups are pretty damn good, actually, uh, for ceramics at least. But that's just something to look for, I think. Now, uh, these are the strings that are going on. I quite like these. I put them on most of my guitars. It doesn't make me play any better, but it makes me feel better, and that's what it's all about. So one, one thing when you're setting up a trim, I forgot. that uh, It's always a good idea. You need to put a chock in there because as I was just tuning it up and it was never settling down. What's going wrong with me? Ah, I forgot. If you don't put a block of wood there, the trim keeps moving as you tighten it. Um, and the idea is that you, you put the block in like, like that. And then it, as you tighten the strings up to tension, it doesn't allow the block to go any further than that. And then when you're done and your strings are good and your intonation is good, then you can release or tighten this, the tighten these screws here 
until the block drops out. So that's what I completely forgot. Dave would be most upset with me for not explaining that. So this is what I'm now doing. Okay. Okay, so I've, I've floated the tram on this thing. Uh, you see it's just floating up. If I play a note here, we got roughly the right amount. I don't know. It's brand new. The Obviously, you can see at the moment that the bridge is lifted up quite a bit. So I'm going to have to drop the strings down. So that's affecting the playability at the minute. I'll change that. Not a big deal. There seems to be height to drop these down, but then the, the spigots will, or the, the screws, the grub screws will stick up. 